the Oklahoma Sooners, they have some good news coming down on the recruiting trail with official visits being announced, commitment dates being announced. If you're anything like me, you're excited to see how this 2025 class is going to shape up. Is it going to be a top three class? Is it going to be a class that they're just in the top five? Could this be the best class ever for Oklahoma over the next month? to a month and a half, I think we're really going to get some key answers to that with five-star offensive linemen looking to make their decision. Some other offensive linemen, one in today that we're going to talk about, tight ends, wide receivers, defensive linemen. Oklahoma's going after a lot of them. So before we do it, guys, I need to hear from y'all. So make sure you're joining the discussion, jumping down in the comments below, giving me your thoughts, your opinions on this 2025 class and what you think about these two to three prospects that we're going to talk about today in the video. But I want to start off today by talking about an offensive lineman. And, I, you know, this video is long overdue because I've been talking to sources around Darius Afalava for a while, and I've just kind of been neglecting to make this video, right? There's been stuff going on with Transfer Portal. It's just, uh, and I try not to push too much content down your throats every day. If you want me to change that, let me know. Uh, so I just I'm kind of just now getting around to it. Uh, Darius Afalava, though, uh, four star offensive lineman with rivals, three star with everybody else. Uh, by the end of the cycle, this kid's going to be a top 250 player consensusly. Um, take me at my word on that one. So you look at some of the schools that are going to be getting official visits for Darius. Obviously, Oklahoma was announced that they're getting one on June 7th. But UCLA, May 10th. Michigan State, May 31st. Utah, June 15th. Washington, June 21st. Darius Afalava's recruitment, I really think, is just now getting started. I think it really is. 6'5", 320 pounds. Uh, 247 has him at a total of 23 offers. When you look at Darius, Darius's film, and you watch how he moves on that offensive line, it, he just moves really smooth, right? He's got really good footwork, um, got a really good size and a really good frame. And I believe, like uh, Sky Ridge High School, is the same high school that Tahusili Akana went to. And we didn't land him, but I think Oklahoma's got a really good shot here. You've got schools like I just mentioned, UCLA. Michigan State, Utah, Washington, Oklahoma's in there. I know Oklahoma made a really good impression on him when he first showed up to Oklahoma with his parents. And, um, yeah, Washington's going to be a tough one to beat. West Coast school, you know they're always them, Oregon, USC. They're always problems for the, for the West Coast kids. They're always going to be top of mind. I think there's a couple schools, though, Obviously, in Afalava's recruitment outside of Oklahoma that you have to watch out for. One of them being LSU. And why is this? Well, if you look at schools that have put out really good offensive linemen over the past couple of years, Washington, Oklahoma, LSU, the, these are some of the schools with the most offensive linemen in the NFL. I think if you're Oklahoma in the SEC, and Afalava obviously knows the SEC is going to be the best place to go and get developed. I'm, I'm sure he knows that. Then I would imagine LSU at some point would probably try to make a run at this kid because they're going to need help on the offensive line. And in this cycle, they need to have a good year. And Afalava is one of those guys where he's got the talent, he's got the intangibles, and the ability to just be a future star at the offensive line. He has a shuttle of 4.3. He had a 40-yard dash of um, 5.02, a vertical of 22, and a bench press of 300. He did 10 reps of 185. Let's see here. What else did he have on his huddle? He squatted 405. He cleaned 245 pounds off of lava. This is one, if you're an Oklahoma fan, you need to watch. I'm not sure if this one's going to wrap up in the summer. I think this one has the potential to potentially go into the fall. Uh, but, you know, if visits go well, somebody makes him feel like he's at home, uh, maybe this one could wrap up a little bit sooner. So, Oklahoma fans, you're going to have to keep your eyes on this one. Again, this is one that 
really hadn't covered and should have been covered a long time ago. Uh, we're going to try to have Afalova on the podcast at some point uh, in between some of these official visits to kind of break it down a little bit where he's at in this recruitment and what this recruitment has been like for him. So that you as an OU fan can kind of just build your own speculation as well. Uh, I know those are a lot of fun. So one of the other positions that I really wanted to target today was tight end. And specifically with Deshaun Brame. Because you guys saw it, June 29th, commitment date. And with Deshaun Brame, you know, for Oklahoma, I feel like this is a must get. Because if you're Oklahoma you really have, I don't think you really have an answer at the tight end position in this class. I mean, you've got Trene Washington in, which I, I mean, I guess maybe he could play tight end. Um, I'm not sure exactly where they want to use him on this team. I really like Chase Lofton and I've had a chance to talk to Chase about his recruitment and where Joe John Finley and them are at there. And I'm going to be honest, guys, I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm not sure if Oklahoma's backing off there, if Oklahoma thinks they have a really good shot for Deshaun Brame and or any of these other guys, and this is what they're wanting to go after. I, I think Chase Lofton's out of the Oklahoma race. I, I really hate saying that because I think Chase Lofton is extremely talented. Uh, he, I mean, he comes in at 6'6", 215 pounds out of Omaha, Nebraska. And I don't think that's Omaha, Nebraska landing Chase Lofton over Oklahoma. I just think it's Joe John Finley and the staff really not pressing too hard for Chase Lofton. Honestly, you look at schools like A&M, Miami, Florida State, obviously Nebraska being the in-state school for Chase Lofton. But Deshaun Brame's interesting. So he's going to be on. There's a reason why I chose Deshaun Brame to match up with Afalaba. It's because they're going to be on campus for an official visit the same day, June 7th. Now, he's not going to be at Party at the Palace or Champion Barbecue when would, or whichever one is 21st. But he's going to be at Oregon that day. Uh, Oregon gets the last official visit. So Ole Miss had theirs on April 12th. You've got Oregon on June 21st, Tennessee on June 14th, and Oklahoma upcoming here June 7th. And if you had to ask me about Deshaun Brame, from everybody that I've talked to, um, I don't know if this is a recruitment that you feel entirely confident in, which again, kind of makes me ask the question why we're not pushing on Chase Lofton a little bit harder. Um, I got to see him at the Print Venables uh, camp last year, and I believe that dude's extremely talented. I believe he could be a really good tight end for somebody. I'm just not sure if there's some confidence here on the Oklahoma side that's just not really being expressed. But uh, Deshaun Brame is obviously a target. And if Oklahoma uh, really feels like they need a tight end, um, I feel like they could put on the full court press here. Uh, Oregon's the interesting one to watch, guys. Oregon. They get the last visit. And Dan Lanning is from Derby, Kansas in that area. So you know he wants to recruit it well. Um, I think they're I think they're after Lincoln Keir too if I, I'd have to go back and look at that but I think they're pretty heavily on that recruitment too so if that's the case um it makes sense and if Dan Lanning's able to go out there and land both of those tight ends um that would be a pretty brutal blow to Oklahoma in my personal opinion so uh but lastly I really want to talk about Kobe Sellers because he's going to be announcing his commitment tomorrow uh Saturday let's see what's today's date uh, look at my calendar. Today's May 10th. Uh, so he'll be announcing his commitment Saturday, May 11th and on the 247 live stream. You guys know we've covered Kobe Sellers since like mid last cycle. I've had a prediction in since November and I think I'm ready to move that prediction over to Texas A&M. Um, I know Jay Valias told him he would like to take him and Tristan Haynes. But uh, I think there's a couple things going against Oklahoma here. And Kobe Sellers is not afraid of the depth at Oklahoma. I just want to make that clear. But I think the depth at Oklahoma is going to be a problem. I just think it makes it a less desirable spot. Additionally, a and just, guys, they got some previous relationships there with dating back Kobe Sellers' early recruitment. So... As I reported back in early April, when he took that initial visit back to AM, they really showed him a culture change. And I mean, from there, you knew AM was going to be a problem. I don't think Texas is as much of a problem. I don't think they land him. 
But I think Kobe Sellers at this point, you expect the pick to be A&M. If it leans Oklahoma's way, I think they just made a last-minute push. Uh, but that's going to be it for the recording updates, guys. Um, Darius Afalaba, Deshaun Brain, two interesting prospects that I think you need to be watching, you need to be aware of. Uh, obviously, here in the next coming months, Champion Barbecue, Party at the Palace, a couple other official visit dates. Uh, I think Michael Fasusi and Ty Haywood will be on campus at the same time. So uh, there's going to be a lot coming down. Oklahoma's going to get a really chance to fine-tune this recording class i'm probably going to come out with the video with another prediction for the remainder of the class so that you guys can have an idea of what i'm thinking uh maybe what i'm hearing but if you guys have not already and you've made it this far make sure you hit that like you hit that subscribe button hey we'll see y'all next time